absolutely perfect weather for summer night baseball. And we've got game two between the Tigers and the Minnesota Twins. The Twins hoping to pick up a win and leapfrog over the Tigers and get back into first place. It's been a tough couple of weeks for the Twins. At one point, they led the Tigers by four and a half games. But now they're looking up at Detroit in the American League Central race. And welcome to Target Field. What a beautiful night for baseball along with Burt Blatham and Vic Bramer. Simply put, Minnesota Twins need to win a ball game, and they need their starting pitcher tonight to give them a better chance to do just that. Well, I think what we've seen, uh, other than Carl Pavano, all the starters really struggling. And tonight it's going to be Nick Blackburn on the mound. Nick Blackburn may be pitching for a continue his spot in the rotation. Maybe it's in jeopardy if he does not improve. Well, he's had a lot of success here at home, 4-0 and in six starts. But, you know, he's not the only one that has struggled in this rotation. You take the two wins from Carl Pavano, the other four guys 0 and 7. You can see the high ERA opponents hitting very well against the starters. This needs to change for the Twins to stay in this race. And it's a race that now includes three teams, the Minnesota Twins, the Detroit Tigers, and the Chicago White Sox. Twins hope to get back to the World Series. The only man who managed them to the World Series, Tom Kelly, one of Minnesota's 50th greatest. And we'll have more on him in a moment. you buy your local Northland Ford dealers. Visit your local Northland Ford dealer or go to NorthlandFord.com and buy Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. It is a beautiful summer night here at Target Field. It's a battle for first place in the American League Central Division between the Twins and the Tigers. Welcome to Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North. I'm Robbie Smikowski. In honor of the Twins' 50th season in the state of Minnesota, the Twins are honoring their 50 greatest. The list was comprised by print, TV, and radio journalists, as well as senior members of the Minnesota Twins staff throughout Twins territory. Tonight, we honor the manager of the 87 and 91 World Series winning Twins teams, Tom Kelly. Here to tell his story is longtime Twins bullpen coach, Rick Stelmazik. Tom Kelly was about respect. Respect for your teammates. Respect the coaches and staff. More than anything, respect the game. TK demanded that everyone 
from the superstar to the 25th man played the game properly. On that, he did not compromise. The result, two world championships. TK said little, but missed nothing. A strong game manager, but a shrewd judge of people. He loved veterans, but identified with the bench player he had been in his career. He conquered the manager's toughest job, handling pitchers. No one was better at handling a bullpen. But Tom Kelly's legacy goes beyond two World Series. The Twins still play sound fundamental baseball every game. To this day, the hallmark of this franchise. And it started with Tom Kelly. Ted Robinson, former Twins broadcaster. Ted Robinson was one of the Twins play-by-play -play announcers in the late 80s and early 90s. Rick Stelmazic, a coach since 1981. When we come back, Nick Blackburn takes to the mound. Battle for first. First pitch next. But after a loss last night, they've slipped to second, trailing a Tiger team that has used a combination of all-stars and rookies on the rise to take over the lead. As we approach midsummer, the race is getting interesting, and the Twins are searching for a spark to turn things around. Tonight, it's another key matchup with Detroit. Twins, Tigers, next. And Nick Blackburn, Taking the mound where he has had some success, target field, and maybe that'll help uh, be the tonic for him to get his season sure turned around. So. Sure hope so. And the Tigers pursuing the Twins in earnest over the last 10 days or so, finally passing the Twins last night, and they'll come back.
with this Menards batting order for manager Jim Leland. Austin Jackson leading off. Johnny Damon in the lineup hitting second. Maglio Ordonez in the lineup was not there last night hitting third. Miguel Cabrera hitting very well at this ballpark. Brennan Bosch, Carlos Guillen, Brandon Inch, Alex Avila, and then Ramon Santiago. And the Chiefs got a report on Nick Blackburn making his 15th start of the year. It's been a struggle to find that sinker. When he gets a get sinker down, he get a lot of double plays. Only one double play turn behind him in his last five starts. And his spot in the rotation might be in jeopardy if he doesn't have a good, strong outing here tonight. Well, there's a good way to start, isn't it? And he even threw a sinker over to Justin Morneau. One away. Northland Ford defense for the Minnesota Twins. Same lineup as they had last night. Young in left, Span in center, Kubel in right. Kanire making another start at third base. Punto and Hudson up the middle. Morneau at first and Maurer behind the plate. One pitch, one out. And Nick Blackburn will take all of those he can get. In his last two starts, a combined five and a third innings pitched and a combined 13 earned runs. Yeah, you have to find a way to put that behind you and you move forward here tonight for Blackburn. Just off the plate, and it's one and one. Ron Gardenhire starting Francisco Liriano in last night's game, keeping a lot of the Detroit lefties like Damon on the bench. Check swing two and one. Well, Blackburn, a, a right handed pitcher that will not walk a lot of guys. He doesn't strike out a lot of guys. He makes them put the ball in play. 22 walks, 26 strikeouts in 80 innings pitched. Into right field, past a diving Morno, and Damon's aboard with a one out single. And a sinker baller. What's hurt Blackburn is the home runs he's allowed. 14 home runs so far this year. See the numbers of Blackburn. We kind of hope. Yeah, opponents hitting 337. He's given up a lot of hits to innings pitch. 111. And that was 112 hits in 80 innings pitched. Kind of hopeful he was going to come back with the uh, Carl Pavano mustache. He wore it uh, for a day in New York, but decided against uh, coming to the mound with a mustache. Here is Maglio Ordonez, and he takes track one. Yeah, he shaved the beard in New York and kept the stash as we saw it on the airplane, but then he shaved it yesterday. So a clean shaving, Nick Blackburn. Down and away, one and one. A year ago at this time, Maglio Ordonez had the flowing locks underneath the helmet. He struggled so much. He got uh, his first haircut in years to try to turn his luck around and did much better the last couple of months last year and looks to be the Ordonias of old this year. Yeah, the uh, baseball players are not superstitious, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Two and one, close pitch just off the outside corner. Last year, Ordonias didn't hit much and didn't hit for much power. Bad combination. He only hit nine home runs last year. He's already hit 10 this year. Strike two and two. Well, Blackburn, a pitcher, he needs to work down in the zone and little movement on that pitch. So that's a good sign. Twelve double plays turned behind Blackburn, making his 15th start. There's a chopper to third. Kanire has one play. It's the first, and on to second is Johnny Damon. If there's baseball in heaven, and I personally think there is, it is played under weather conditions like this. It just couldn't get any better. Low humidity, moderate temperatures, a little bit of a breeze, and not a cloud in the sky. And what's even better, about 40,000 people watching this yeah. ball game. As we said last night, all those years in the Metrodome, and we dreamt of nights like this outdoors, and now we've we had one last night, another one tonight, and the weather's supposed to be beautiful for most of this homestand. Here's Miguel Cabrera. Big swing and a miss. Well, good slider right there. What you don't want to do in situations like this when you're struggling is let the guy that knocks in all the runs hurt you. Now, I know the Twins pitching staff has excellent control, but 
you've got to bust this guy hard inside to open up a way. That's what one thing I'd like to see these guys do a little more of. Work that ball hard in to a guy like Cabrera. Because if you pitch him hard in now in his first at bat with first base open, it kind of sends a message to him in his second and third at bat. Not afraid to pitch inside. And Cabrera, very good numbers against Blackburn. Eight hits and 19 at bats. You know, you uh, in the pregame and Tim Wagner, too, talked about the familiarity yesterday of Twins and Tigers know each other. Well, that familiarity can work against you, too. If, if you're a hitter, I would imagine, and you know a pitcher doesn't have a history of busting you inside, that, that makes you feel more comfortable at the plate. Absolutely, and I think we've seen that with Baker, Slowey, and Blackburn that, you know, you need to be a little more aggressive inside. Pop up and Morneau will watch it drift back into the seats one and two. And again, I'm not saying to hit anybody. I'm just saying make them move their feet. Let them know that you're out there. So it does open up the outer half of the plate. Remember working games with Jim Cott years ago, and he would say sometimes hitters hit themselves. Pitcher throws the ball where he wants to, and the only reason the, the batter's hit by the pitch is they're diving in right. and sticking their nose in where they've got no business sticking it. Yeah, and Cabrera, big man. I mean, he's six foot four, about 230, and he likes to extend those arms. He just guys a good hitter. One and two. And Blackburn gets him and has a clean first inning. A one out single does no damage. Damon's left the second base. To the last seven, the Menards batting order for Ron Gardenhire tonight. The Menards fan Orlando Hudson, Joel Maurer, great numbers against Galarraga, including some power numbers. Then Justin Morno, Jason Kubel, Michael Kadire, Jim Tomey, Delvin Young, and Nick Kunta. And the Dodge Ram Scatter report on Armando Galarraga, making his eighth start, his ninth appearance of the year. Started the season in AAA. And then, of course, we all saw that game on June 2nd in Detroit. When he had that perfect game going up until the 27th batter. And the Tigers have won seven, or excuse me, six of his seven starts so far. Galarraga three and one so far this year with the Tigers. Denard Span to lead things off. He was hit by a pitch to start the ball game last night. He takes inside ball one. Galarraga, a sinker slider type pitcher. So that's what the Twins offense will try to hit off of Galarraga. At the knees, a strike. Be interesting if you don't mind uh, over the course of the evening. Uh, since we've got two sinker slider types, to have you contrast Blackburn against Galarraga. This one driven to the gap in right center. Jackson over. Not going to get there. It's going to run to the deepest part of the park. Span flies around second. He'll go to third with a leadoff triple. Oh, 
Oh, those triples always seem to get the home crowd on their feet, and what a way to start this ball game. His fifth triple of the year for Denard Spann, and that's not a bad pitch right there, but Spann hitting that ball past Jackson all the way to that 403 sign. And the speedster, and he plays center field. He knows how difficult it is to get that ball back in from where he was, Jackson was at. And it's a leadoff triple as Steve Little tonight, the third base coach, holds him up. Here's Hudson. And a drive to right. Ordonez won't catch it. It's hard off the wall. Hudson's digging for two. Back to back extra base hits. And the Twins take a quick 1 0 lead. Well, you told me already to. to, to What's the difference between Blackburn and Galarraga? Well, when you leave pitches up like this, especially middle in to a hitter, you're going to, that's just going to happen right there. Hudson picking up a double, his 13th of the year, driving in his 18th run. And three pitches into the ball game, the Twins have a one nothing lead. Should mention Steve Little in the third base coach's box. Scotty Elger taking care of a personal matter tonight. So runner at second, nobody out, and Maurer to the plate. A strike on the outside corner. I said three pitches in, four pitches into the ball game. Phil Maurer, great numbers against Galarraga. Eight hits in 17 at bats with a couple home runs. Down and in, nice dig by the catcher Avila. One thing, Dick, I think what we've seen from Target Field, it's a field that has a lot of gap in the in the alleys. You saw Span and then Hudson hitting the ball over Ardonias. It's not a home run park right now. Will it be in the future? It may be. But there's been a lot of extra base hits here, especially doubles. Second most in the American League behind Fenway Park. And Joe Maurer, one of those guys, is a gap type hitter. When he's hitting the ball solid, yeah, the home runs will come for Joe. He has not hit a home run here yet, but he is second on the ball club with 21 doubles. Two and one to Maurer. Fouled away. In any sport, there's a saying, it's a cliche, you've got to take what's given to you. And typically, you talk about your opponent in that way. If you're going to play you a certain way in, in basketball, you react and you take what's given to you. But it's probably true also in the arena in which you play. If a ballpark doesn't yield too many home runs, then go ahead and get your, your doubles and your triples and, and take what's given to you. That's right. Two and two to Maurer. Floats outside three and two with more on deck. Again, Joe's goal right here is to get Hudson from second to third. You have to do the little things when your team is struggling. And the Twins, again, have lost six out of the last seven, mainly not because of the offense, but wouldn't it be nice for Blackburn to go out there with a two run lead over a one run lead if Maurer can do his job right here? Give Justin a chance to drive him in. Hit high and deep to center, and Jackson retreats. Hudson will tag from second and go to third. So Maurer hit it a long way, about 400 feet from home plate. And it's a fly ball that advanced Hudson to third. But he got the job done right there. The Northland Ford defense for the Tigers, Bosch and left, Jackson at center, Ordonez in right, Hinge at third, Santiago and Guillen, the shortstop and second baseman, Cabrera at first, and Avila doing the catching tonight for the Tigers. And now the infield in with Morno at the plate. Popped up near the Tiger dugout. And out of play. Last night, even though they were leading four to one in the first inning. 
the uh, Tigers pitched Morno very gingerly. Now I don't think Colorado wants to leave too many pitches up there, does he? I don't think so. Try it again and see what happens. Justin second in the American League, hitting at 350. Another pitch up, and it's fouled back. And Morno behind in the count, 0 and 2. But last night, the Tigers leading by three runs, and the Twins looked like they were going to put together a, a, a response, a crooked number in their half of the inning. But they walked Morno almost intentionally, it seemed, to get to Kubel, and they got the double play. Well, you have to pick up an RBI in this situation. And we haven't said this yet. Justin second on the team in our in that department. The Delman Young. Yep. One and two. Twenty nine multi hit games for Justin Morneau. Ishiro Suzuki leading the American League with thirty five multi hit games. And five for nine lifetime excuse me five for nineteen lifetime against Galarraga. Got him. It needs to be a throw to first. Out number two. So we throw him something down in the dirt. Morno chased it. Out number two. Yeah, it looked like the slider right there. He's trying to get a ground ball and he ends up picking up a strikeout. Galarraga's just 17 strikeout. That's the hard breaking ball right there. Getting underneath the legs of Avila, but he does make the throw to first for the second out. 17 strikeouts and now 45 innings pitch for Galarraga, just like Blackburn, more of a contact type pitcher. Galarraga got Maurer, he got Morno, now Hudson a third with Kubel at the plate. Swing and a foul. Teams look really good when they get two out hits in situations like this. It covers up a lot of other shortcomings. And we'll see if Kubel can deliver here. And starting the ball game with a couple of extra base hits so far. Just one run on the board. Two strikes. And Kubel finally got an RBI hit in the seventh inning, but he came up in the four straight at bats with a chance to tie the game. And the Tigers retired him twice on double play balls the first three times. One and two. Hudson at third. He drove in Spam, who would triple to start the game. Two and two. First two pitches in her half of the plate, the last two sinkers away. Now Avila sitting inside. And that's bounce foul. Kubel picking up the batting average and picking up the runs batted in. Despite a very slow start, he's third on the team in runs batted in with 42. Favre, the hitting coach for the Twins, getting his second look at this lineup that includes Kubel and Tony and Young. Driven to right. Hard off the wall and away from Ordonez. It'll be the third extra base hit. Kubel with a big two out hit, and the Twins take a 2 nothing lead. Well, that's exactly what you need to picking each other up. He tried to go back inside again and left the ball up and Kubel driving in his 43rd run. See the high fastball right there over the head of Ordonez. He went back as far, as far as he thought he could, but then got too close to the wall. And the ball gets away. Quick trip to the mound by Rick Knapp. He, uh, through what looked like the same pitch to Kubel there that he got away with twice to Morno. And he got a couple of strikes against Morno on foul balls, but Kubel 
drill that one off the fence. Right, you could see by Galarraga's. I mean, he wanted that ball inner half of the plate, and he left it out, and Kubel took advantage of it. So the Twins triple double double here in the first and a two nothing lead. You see where Avila is sitting and watch where that ball ends up. I mean, right over the heart of the plate, up in the zone, and Kubel jumped all over it. So three extra base hits for the Twins. Michael Kadire went one for four last night. He got his hit when he hit the ball the softest he hit it all night long. Kadire hit two blistering line drives for outs. He hit a deep fly ball to center for an out and got a single leading off the four. I thought Timmy Laudner did a good job of analyzing Kadire's swing last night when he was saying, you know what? He was up there ready to swing. He didn't want to take too many pitches, especially against a guy like Galarraga. You know, I mean, here you have to be ready to, to hit because this guy's not going to walk you. 12 walks in 44 innings. He's all like, again, like Blackburn. They're going to make you make contact. Probably another slider down and away. The pitch that teams have attacked Michael with with two strikes. One and two. Second base with Tian and Kadir's tough luck continues. He got the barrel of the bat on it, hit it sharply for the final out of the first inning. The first inning that included three extra base hits. Robbie and Smikowski, and why not get a head start on summer by getting some Target Field State Fair food? We're two months away from the State Fair, right in dead center field on the main concourse. And look at what I have there, a little shrimp on a stick, corn dog, a little pork chop on a stick, and, of course, you got to have some cheese curds there, Dick and Bert. Now, you know I like to eat more than most people you'll ever meet, but uh, I don't think <laughs> I could eat all this, so I'm going to give some go away. go for it. Yeah, we got Ashley here. You like some food, Ashley? I'm going to make this young lady's night. What'd you like? You're welcome. She got some shrimp on a stick. Dead center field and get some state fair classics here. Now, you guys want pork chop, corn dogs, guys? Sure, bring it up. Okay, on my way. 1 0 oh to Brennan Bosch. Bouncer to third. But Iron has it. And Bosch retired. One away, and that'll bring up Carlos Guillen. Well, it's good to see for so far for Blackburn three ground ball outs and one strikeout, so nothing hit in the air yet. And I'm sure Blackburn going into this outing, he knows the importance of this outing. He's had some success against the Tigers. He's had success here. He needed, he needs a good outing. Ian, the second baseman, he has been asked to return to the infield again and play second base, a position he hadn't played regularly for 11 years because of Brennan Bosch. 
Of course, the Tigers love to have his switch hitting bat in the lineup with his veteran presence. Yeah, I'd have to say he's the version of Michael Kadire for the Twins. I mean, he right. can play anywhere. Inside, one and one. That's the pitch I'm talking about. Make the hitter move their feet a little bit, and then maybe it'll open up that outer half of the plate with that good sinker down and away. So a breaking ball down and in, and you see what Gian has to do. He has to back away a little bit. And an off-speed pitch just missing down. And that's a good sign too. He's missing down in the strike zone. Blackburn has said in his recent starts, and you got to understand. I mean, no one feels it more than the starting pitcher. He he realizes he's let his team down the last couple of starts, two and one. Well, you let yourself down. You know, you expect more out of yourself. He says he's been so conscious of his mechanics. He's he's kind of bound himself up. My term, not his. He's he's so concerned about. You know his front shoulder and things like that. Three and one. And a strike. Yeah, sometimes you can get too mechanical. You worry about, okay, am I? Where's my hand? No, let the ball go. I'm sorry. Get to that balance point. That's the main thing. And then let your natural delivery take over. He's a guy that doesn't really reach out. He's more of a tall stand-up type pitcher that works on an angle. Tigers got a one out single in the first. Now they get a one out walk. Well, he always has had that little bit of hesitation right here. Right when he gets there, that keeps everything together. And then that downward type, you can see he doesn't overstride. He's straight over the top. Here's Brandon in. Getting in the seventh spot for the Tigers. Going to reach the seats. One strike. Early in his career, Andrews moved around an awful lot behind the plate, third base, back behind the plate, back at third base. Yeah, this guy's a good athlete. In his tenth season with the Tigers, he made his first All-Star appearance last year. So far. Everything put in play has been hit on the ground against Blackburn. The base hit by Damon and the three ground ball outs. And that'll be a sign too that Blackburn is a little bit sharper with his control. If he could get in to hit a ground ball at somebody here. Twins bounced into three double plays last night. They'd like to turn one and get off the field here in the second. Hudson. Corrals it out there. There's your double play. There you go. Three men faced by Blackburn in the second. It's still two to nothing.
that separates this metropolitan area from others in the country, the Great Lakes, the Lake of the Isles and the beautiful Minneapolis Chain of Lakes Regional Park, connected to Cedar Lake and Lake Calhoun, averaging 5.5 million visitors per year. Isn't there like 10,000 lakes here? There's, I think somebody made an official count of over 15,000 wow. bodies of water that would constitute a lake in the state. Tony with a smash, fielded by the shortstop on the other side of the bag. One down. Tony quickly retired. Tony's baseball tonight brought to you in Sony high definition. So this, this guy went around and just counted them all? Well, I guess, and I don't know what constitutes a, uh, constitutes a pond from a lake. I don't know what the definition is, but they say over 15,000 lakes. Really, when you think about it, you've... You've traveled to more cities than I have over the years. And in this country, name another city that has so many beautiful inner city, if you will, lakes. Well, it's, it's one of the great parts of, uh, of the Twin Cities area. Gilman Young fouling it back. Two strikes. And we got the, the Mississippi River right through... Uh, downtown, we have the Minnesota River that goes a little bit south of here, the St. Croix separating Minnesota and Wisconsin. The tapper foul, still two strikes. Galarraga kind of dropping down a little bit right there, more three quarters on that fastball. So giving Delman Young a, a little different angle to look at. Look at that number on the right. The Twins' eighth place hitter is leading the team and runs batted in. Two strikes. Foul tip gets him. And Colorado gets a couple of quick outs here in the second. You can visit the official online shop of the Minnesota Twins. Go to twinsbaseball.com and browse the largest selection of official gear, including the latest apparel, nostalgic memorabilia, authentic classics for the whole family. Get your gear from the official source, the twinsbaseball.com shop, and accept no substitutes. They, they probably have those there. Whether you choose to buy one and wear one, of course, is a personal choice. Here's Nick Punta. Two and zero. Colorado greeted by a couple of extra base hits in the first two at bats, and a big two-out double by Jason Kubel. All three hits reach the fence. Span a triple to center. Hudson and Mao, excuse me, Hudson and Kubel doubles off the fence in right. Three and one. Probably wishing for life to return to normal. He says everywhere he goes, people want to talk about the near perfect game. And more specifically, I think how he handled it huh. with the disappointment. He handled, handled it as good as anybody could. A lot of class. Three and two. You know, and I don't say this certainly with any pride, I guess more shame than anything else. Everybody. Handled their own situation better than I would have. <laughs> the umpire handled it better. The manager, everybody just handled it the way it should be handled. Three and two to Punto, and another foul. Moraga against the Indians. Yeah, back on June 2nd, had that perfect game going up until that last hitter. Full count to Punto. And another foul. Punto continues to grind out at bats in the ninth spot in the batting order. Hoping for a chance here in the second inning. Oh, 
hold to Cabrera. He'll make the play himself, and Galarraga has a much smoother ride in the second inning. to do there, pal. There you go. <laughs> Bert and Joyce. We know who Joyce is. Well, I'm sure his name is Bert. Oh, okay. Well, you can get involved in our telecast and uh, text the word value followed by a space in the player's name to short code two three four two three four and vote on the Arby's value player of the game. Jim told me got a huge lead for some reason. That'll probably change. Here's Alex Avila. Down low, ball one. Avila, Santiago, and Jackson to face Blackburn here in the third. Yeah, Avila in his second season with the Tigers. He's been swinging a pretty good bat as of late. Gerald Laird and Avila kind of splitting time. One and one to Avila. And Avila over his last 22 ball games hitting 323. to be one of those classic cases where he says he's getting more hits hitting better because he's getting more playing time Jim Leland says he getting more playing time because he's hitting better he's seeing more playing time than Gerald Laird typically they kind of go hand in hand don't they yeah. three and one Blackburn's given up one walk it came with one out in the second he doesn't want to she will walk here to the leadoff man in the third. Three and two. Yeah, keep attacking the strike zone. Been able to get strike one on six of the eight batters he has faced so far. That's a key to Blackburn. No fly ball outs. Five ground ball outs so far with the strikeout. When he faced the Brewers in his last start, he was about where he is right now. He had a couple of good innings, no problems, until he gave up a double to the pitcher for Milwaukee. And then things really quickly unraveled after that. He ended up giving up a couple of two run home runs in the third inning. Well, four of the five starts he had so far here in the month of June have been on the road. The one he did pitch very well, and that was here against the Braves. Avila strikes out on a foul tip one away. Tonight's Farmers Insurance True Story. On this date in 1936, Harmon Killebrew was born in Payette, Idaho. Talk to Harmon today and wish him a happy birthday. And uh, Harmon turning, well, you can do the math, 74 today. Happy birthday, Mr. Killebrew. 
He was the face of this franchise for the first 15 years anyway. I guess when you're the face of the franchise long after you've retired, that means you're a pretty good player. Right? I, think, I think he's a guy that still is the face yeah. of this franchise. To short center span. Racing in and he won't get there. It'll be a blue pit for Santiago and another Detroit base runner with one out in an inning. Herman was hosting a golf tournament today. He's got a granddaughter who is uh, in the need of uh, some serious medical attention. Katie, age nine. And if you'd like to find out more about her situation and if uh, it moves you to contribute uh, to her situation, go to www. Harmon Killebrew Foundation.org. It's Katie C A I T Y. Here's Austin Jackson with one on and one out. Santiago at first base, not much of a base stealing threat. One stolen base on the year. One thing Blackburn has been able to do, and that's hold runners on. Kind of hesitated for a while to throw that ball home, and good pitch in her half of the plate. It's only been three stolen bases attempts against Blackburn so far this year, and only one have been successful. Hold it. And a breaking ball up and in, one on one. Austin Jackson. Right center and hit deep. Span plays the bounce beautifully. It's a double for Jackson. Santiago to third. And the Tigers get the tying run in scoring position. Back to back hits here in the third. Hey, left the ball up right there. He kind of fell behind on Jackson, left the ball up, and Jackson took it the other way. Having an outstanding rookie season for the Detroit Tigers. Just taking that pitch and hitting it high off that wall. And like you mentioned, Bernard Spann playing the carom perfectly and getting it back in. Got his body in front of that ball. Damon with a ground ball single to right. Twins will play the infield back. Kadir even with the bag at third. And a first pitch strike. Damon starting to come around a little bit in his. Most recent start got a pair of doubles. And he got a single in his first at bat against Blackburn here tonight. Missing the inside corner, one and one. The term you use is damage control, and Blackburn has not done a very good job of that over these last few starts. Let's see what he can do here in the third inning. We see the open stance of Johnny Damon. And then when that ball is delivered, that right foot will go just like that. And a base hit for Johnny Damon, a second hit, driving in a couple runs, and Damon, Damon hustling in the second. Good hustle by Johnny Damon. And the Tigers now with three straight hits have tied the game. Damon taking this pitch, not a bad pitch down and away, but hitting it sharply past the diving Hudson. See when you when you talk about getting hitters off the plate a little bit and uh, maybe not able to handle good pitches, I, I think of pitches like that. That looked like it was right where Blackburn wanted to put it, but Damon was able to reach across the plate and, and hit it sharply. Here's Ordonez. Twins with three hits and a couple of runs in the first inning. Now the Tigers answer with three hits so far, a couple of runs in the third. And 
again. Blackburn gets ahead. Lord Onions. Hudson scoops. And Morno does too. A tough fielding play by Hudson. Maybe a tougher catch at first by Morno. Yeah, I don't know if Blackburn got a piece of this, but Ordonia is hitting it right up the middle, kind of slowing it down. Either hit a piece of Blackburn or hit the mound, and it slowed down. That allowed Hudson to kind of go to his right and make a nice play. And then Justin right there picking it at first, as he does so well. On the play, Johnny Damon goes to third. So a nice defensive play. First inning, the Twins got a big two out hit. Now the Tigers will look for a two out hit from Cabrera. And there it is, and it puts the Tigers in front. Fourth hit of the inning, and it's 3 2 Detroit. Well, Cabrera came in at a game leading the American League with 66 RBIs and too good a pitch right there. Again, this guy is paid to drive in runs. And Blackburn kind of just left it right in. Take a look. Mauer wanting it in. Get that ball in there a little bit further. And Cabrera opens up. Gets that RBI. Here's Brennan Bosch. And it's a, another crooked number up on the board against Nick Blackburn. It a towering foul fly. One strike. And Blackburn running into trouble starting with the ninth spot in the batting order. It was Giovanni Gallardo who hit a double to start his miserable third inning in Milwaukee. And now Ramon Santiago, the ninth place hitter, starts this rally with a single. One and one. One and one to Bosch. And now two and one. And Bauer will run out to the mound. It has to be exasperating for Blackburn. I, I know it is for Twins fans. Blackburn, five starts in May, five wins. Every start, he lasted at least seven innings. And the five starts in June, only once has he completed so much as four innings. Probably exasperating to the pitching coach too. Is there that final line between winning up here and losing up here? Oh yeah. Oh yes. You know you need breaks, and again he's not a strikeout type pitcher, so he needs guys to hit the ball at somebody from time to time. But what happens, you know, when you're not pitching well, you get into counts like this, hitters type counts. Of course, May five and old Grady ERA, but here in the month of June, he just wants June to get over with. But he'd like to end it with a win here today. Fly ball to left. And Young retreats. And the fact of the matter is, if he wants to make starts in July, he might have to pitch better in this last start of his in June.
3 2 Detroit, and on this date in franchise history, 50 years ago today, the Twins signed Jim Rance. Actually, it was still the Washington Senators organization mm -hmm. back then. And the Jim Rance uh, celebrating his 50th year in the franchise uh, organization, the Senators first, then, of course, the Twins. He, uh, of course, a great college pitcher, Span takes strike one. And played through the 64 season, managed in 1965 up in St. Cloud. Joined the Twins front office in the public relations department in 1965. Moved to the baseball department in 1970, and he's climbed the ladder ever since. And talk about the face of the franchise. I don't know if you call Jim the face of the franchise, but maybe the backbone of the franchise. He's been around for as long as there have been the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, Jimmy Rance inducted into the Twins Hall of Fame in 2007. He got a signing bonus of $4,200. That's pretty good money back then, 1960. <laughs> that paid $400 a month, which was breaks down to about $13.33 a day to play minor league baseball. Congratulations to Jim and Pearl and the whole family. Jim not at the game tonight. Hopefully uh, celebrating and uh, watching Twins baseball. One and two to Denard Span. Tapper foul. Span started the game with a triple to center. Hudson brought him in with a double. Kubel brought Hudson in with a double. The Twins had a two nothing lead, but now they're down a run. Outside two and two. Over the winter of 2008, the Tigers ended up trading for Galarraga, and they thought they got a pretty good pitcher. When his rookie season, he won 13 ball games for him. Last year had a miserable year: six wins, ten losses, very high ERA. Uh, followed off ERA at 5.64. I think going into spring training, he thought he was going to be in the rotation. He had a little bit of wake-up call. Tigers sent him down to Triple A. Down to Toledo, and he was not recalled until the early part of May. Tigers decided to go with Dontrell Willis, who's starting tonight for his new team, the Diamondbacks. Two and two. And Span bounces another one foul. Of course, the Tigers trying to get some return on their money with the Dontrell Willis contract, and so the. the, the Cards were kind of stacked against uh, Colorado to begin with, and then Willis continued his struggles. Tigers severed their ties with him, and that opened up a spot for Colorado. Two and two to span. A long battle here to start the third inning. Twins want to get at least one back here to get back to even with Detroit. Nice to center. Great at bat for Span. Nice to see him stinging the ball a couple of times in his first two at bats here tonight. Well, Span has really enjoyed hitting here at Target Field compared to where he has struggled on the road, but good at bat because he fouled off some really good pitches in her half of the plate, and then he tried that sinker down and away, and Span smoking it right up the middle. Well, the Twins get their fourth hit of the ball game, their first single. Colorado on the mound of Vila behind the plate has been pretty good at throwing out runners. We'll see if the Twins try to put a play on here with Hudson at the plate. Dragging the bunt with him and too hard and foul one strike. The bunts were a key part of the Detroit win last night. Maybe uh, the Twins' inability to field them was. Uh, Big part of Detroit's win. Yeah, again, that was against Lariano when he lets that ball go. His momentum kind of pushes him toward third base, and you know Santiago bunted a couple times toward first base, and then uh, Austin Jackson bunted toward first base. So he ends the third baseman playing in on the grass, or almost on the grass at third. One strike to Hudson. Long hold gets 
time called at the plate. Steve Little giving the signs from the third base coach's box. Scotty Alter tending to a personal matter tonight. And now Galarraga gets two strikes on Hudson. Corner. We've seen Hudson Bird in recent games hook the ball a little bit more from the left side of the plate. Getting the balls, uh, some balls into the corner. He hit one off the fence in the first inning. Well, you know, he had that wrist injury in that left arm and uh, left wrist area. And it's like he's just starting to feel a lot better. Saw Blackburn hold the ball as a pitcher and Galarraga doing the same thing. One and two. Rounder to second. Santiago fumbles it and gets just one out. Span will be safe at second base. The Tigers turned. Uh, Three double plays last night. Ian, the second baseman tonight, tried to turn it but dropped the ball. Yeah, he kind of put his body into the right position, but then he just bobbled the ball. Take a look right here. Ian spinning around and then loses the handle on, on that baseball, but does get the out of first base. Good defensive player. No matter where you put him. Mauer with a chance to tie the game with a hit to the outfield. Looking for his first hit of the series. Hit a deep fly ball to center. His first time up. Strike on the outside corner. It's unusual to see Mauer come to the plate with an ad batting average that begins with a two. Isn't that unbelievable? I mean, most people would say, you know, if I could hit 299, I'd, I'd be a pretty good player. <laughs> so much is expected from this young man. There's a fly to left, hanging in the air for Bosch, and out number two. You know, you look at Joe Mauer. I mean, you know, three-time American League batting title and six in the last couple of years. And you know you talk about hitting the ball sharply. Maybe he's hitting the ball too good. Line drive outs in 2008, 22 percent when he led the American League in hitting. Same thing last year. So far this year, he's actually hitting more line drives, but the average at you know under 300 now. Stats LLC, the uh, statistics source for Fox Sports North, coming up with those numbers. That's not uh, you or me or anybody else. We, no, I, have, I have better things to do. <laughs> Been counting line drives, but uh, when you hear Ron Garden hire say, you know, he doesn't worry about him because he he's still hitting the ball hard. There's uh, there's the statistical proof if you can come up with that on uh, outs that are made. One and zero to Morno, and the Twins need another two out hit here to get this game tied up. Two and zero. In the first inning at bat, Morno got a couple of fastballs up around the belt. He fouled them both back and ended up striking out on a slider in the dirt. Different story here. Now the count's 2 0. Oh. First base is open and Kubel on deck. Well, 
working the outer half of the plate. You see Avila right there. Good pitch. Now, if there's two strikes on Justin, he probably hits the line drive to left field for a base hit on that pitch. But I think he's looking for something to hit a little bit further than that. Three and one. Kubel on deck as uh, we've seen already the Tigers have the veteran Cabrera but a pretty productive rookie hitting behind him and Brennan Bosch. And the Twins would like to think that Kubel will continue to drive in some big runs if teams are too careful with Morna. Uh, pitch up and foul back again. Well, I to tell you what I think if you ask Justin in his first two at bats he missed his pitches. Got a couple fastballs in his first at bat fouled it off. And right there, some movement on that pitch, but a pitch that Justin said, Boy, I could have hit that ball a long way. Now, with two strikes, we've seen Justin take that pitch where a lot of guys are pitching them away to left field. Tigers took the lead when their cleanup hitter got a two out hit in the top of this inning. Let's see if Morno can answer for the twin. I think they're going to go inside right here. Javila, the catcher. Slider again. Yep. And Morno drives it down the right field line. Ordonez plays it on a hop. Stan scores, and the Twins have tied it up. So a little short fly ball that was short enough to drop in front of Ordonez, and Morno does tie it up with a two-out hit. That's well, 50th run driven in for Justin. He does go back in with that slider, and just time Justin waited for it. A lot of top spin on that ball. He thought, I think maybe Ordonez could have caught that ball, but a lot of top spin on that ball laying in front of Ordonez. And the game is tied as Span scores for the second time in the game. Here's Kubel, who drove in a run with a double with two out in the first. Lifts it foul over the Tiger dugout. White Sox have jumped on Brian Bannis here. They've got a 4 0 lead in the top of the fourth in Kansas City. Twins have scored three times, twice on two out hits. Good change up right there. Taking something off that pitch in a good spot. Oh and two to Kubel. To left field. Well, Bosch awaits and ends the inning. Twins get another leadoff hit from Span and they tie it up in the third.
Yeah, Denard led off the offense for the Twins in the bottom of the first inning with a triple. He scored. Then he singled to lead off the third. He scored. Johnny Damon with a big two run double in the third inning. And Nick Blackburn needs to put a zero on the board right here. Forget about that three runs he gave up last inning. The game is tied at three apiece. And that's been one of the problems for Blackburn when he ran into trouble in the third inning in Milwaukee. He compounded matters by running into more trouble the next inning. So, yeah, he would love to get back to uh, having a quick inning here in the fourth. One strike again, two strikes. Gian walked his first time up. And then Blackburn got uh, a double play ball off the bat of Brandon in. Well, everybody would like to go out there and win every game that you start, but you're going to have peaks and valleys throughout your career. Tim Laudner talked about that in the pregame. So you just have to keep battling, keep battling, because uh, nobody's going to feel sorry for you if you get beat around. It's, up, it's what you do inside and your extra work that you do to try to get yourself more mentally ready for the game than physically. Bouncer left side. Punto guns it over there. Just barely got in at first. A very close play. Tim Laudner, you're down by the Twins dugout. What have you noticed uh, from Nick Blackburn here tonight? Well, Bert, or Dick and Bert, it's just the same thing that Bert talked about at the start of this inning. Your team just scored your run to tie the game. It's very, very important for Nick to go back out there. Start the inning off. He just got the first hitter. It's vital to make sure that you bear down and get that first hitter and give your team an opportunity to get back in the dugout and score some runs for you. Uh, Bert, you know what, Bert? There was nobody better at that than you, buddy. Well, thank you very much. And I tell you what, I mean, you get, I got upset. You know, I mean, when I was watching Blackburn walk off, walk off that mound after he gave up the three runs. I'm sorry, something's going to be broken in that dugout. That's just the way I was. I expected so much out of myself. And I see these pitchers struggle right now, and I, I know what they're going through. It's, it's frustrating because for a while there in May, it's 5 and 0, oh, great ERA, and all of a sudden here, the month of June, seem like you can't get anybody out. But if you, if you start losing faith in yourself, Timmy, I mean, then you're lost. Absolutely, because just like, you know, like you said, nobody's going to feel sorry for you. It's up to you to relax, get back to what made you good. Nick Blackburn needs to get back to getting the ball down. Get back to what made him good. And the first way that he can do that is relax and trust his instincts, trust his abilities. We said it before, stop thinking about it. Just go ahead and do it. And it's a very hard thing to do, but you got to let your abilities take over. Right, and there's that always that little negative guy that sits in the back of your mind saying, you know, something bad's going to happen. Something bad's going to happen. And, and be darn it, it doesn't, you know, so you just have to get rid of that little guy. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How, Blackburn's at a point now with so many short starts where he's he's probably trying to take baby steps and tell himself, okay, this worked. I'm on the right track. I'm building myself back up. But at some point, as much as you try to encourage yourself, it's the results that are going to either convince you or otherwise that you know your struggles are going to continue. Here's a fly to left, hanging up for Delvin Young, who turns around and makes a catch at the wall. Delvin turned his back to the infield, but eventually found the ball again and made the catch. You know what you do? You sit down with your catcher. And I did this a lot with Timmy Lauder. I said, I want to go back to basics. I have to go back to basics. See Delvin Young drifting back and making the catch against the wall. I always went back to basics. And what were my basics? Get to my balance point and establish down and away. That's the pitch that always got me back. If I could down, go down and away, that means I'm working out front. And that's the only pitch I wanted. Then everything well, self would fall into place. And then once in a while, throw the ball up and in. Let the hitter that, you know, I care out here. I want to win this ball game. I'm just not going to let you lean out over the plate and just continue to keep hitting. Me. One strike to Santiago. It was his single in the third that started the three-run rally for Detroit. Strikes. Santiago in last night's game hitting second and was a real nuisance with the bumps. 
Drawing a walk. Tonight hitting the down on the order of ninth. Well, Blackburn's done a good job so far. The last nine batters he's faced here, Santiago, the ninth place hitter, been able to get strike one on 14 of the 17 so far. Another key for Blackburn. Get ahead in the count. And Timmy, I know you're still down there, but it's also very important for Joe Maurer and Blackburn to talk between innings, too. You, you have to be able to draw some, first of all, from the experience of your catcher and, and being able to handle and call a game with these hitters up here. And you also want to depend upon your catcher a little bit to help pump you up. And I, I took it upon myself to make sure that you give these guys the opportunity to succeed, go out there, tell them what kind of stuff they got, say, hey, you know what, you've got good stuff tonight. Let's go ahead and turn it loose a little bit. Let's have some fun out here. I know you lied to me a lot. I <laughs> lied like crazy to you. <laughs> no, seriously, you have to be able to have fun and, and enjoy what you're doing and stop thinking about what you're doing and let your ability take over, just like a call third strike ends the fourth inning. When we come back, we'll give you an update on Detroit relief pitcher Joel Zamaya. And that's all I wanted was just one full year of health. And uh, I worked, like I said, I worked hard for it. Uh, I mean, I, I thought my career was done, man. Well, I tell you what, that uh, emotional words right there from Joel, Joel Zamaya. What happened last night was, uh, I think, a player's biggest nightmare, especially a pitcher. The incident was hard to watch. Just watching his commentary about it was hard to watch. You realize how heartfelt. Uh, Grief stricken, if you will, he is about the events. Here's a drive to right chasing Ordonez to the edge of the track, one away. Well, we'll set it up for you again with Delman Young at the plate in the eighth inning. Zamaya threw that pitch and collapsed in pain. Holding his right elbow, and everyone feared the worst, and it's not good, but it, as it's turned out, isn't the worst case scenario. For Joel Zamaya and the Tigers. He's done for this year, but I'll admit to you, I've never heard of this injury. Here's Tommy lifting a towering fly ball over near the tarp and out of play. Here's what happened to Joel Zamaya. The the point of his elbow, the heel of his elbow, if you will, broke off on that pitch last night. The ligaments, fine. Yeah. Everything else structurally is fine. Have you ever heard of a pitcher 
torquing his elbow so much that the point of the elbow breaks off. No, I haven't. Uh, you know, I talked to Dr. Uh, John Steves, the team orthopedic surgeon today about that, and he just said, you know, it's really a freaky type of accident, especially for a pitcher. You know, he expected when he went down there to see him, he saw maybe some ligament damage or something like that, but right. the actual fracture itself was a surprise, I think, a lot of people. Two and one to Tommy. Swing two and two. Now we've mentioned the names Dave Dravecki and Tom Browning. Their forearms broke in the delivery of a pitch, but back in the very joint itself, the cap of the elbow snapping off. I've I've never heard of that. Two and two to Tony. Well, I think what hurts Joel Zamaya so much, it's not the first time he's been hurt to right. not be part of you know a season. And that's the frustrating part when you're 25 years old you come up and have a great rookie season and then the last three four years have just been nothing but frustrating moments and what can you do. It's been weird things too. you know a, a, a finger injury he dropped a, a box on his right shoulder and missed time that really impacted two seasons. And now this year after all that rehab and the laborious workouts to get into shape and get ready for a season something like this happens. Yeah I mean it's got to be frustrating to him but you know what you have to deal with it. and he, he will deal with it he's gone through it again enough that he knows that uh, it hurts but he'll do the rehab and he'll hopefully be out on that mound next year for the Tigers. Delvin Young the hitter went down swinging his first time up. Cabrera, the first baseman in the neighborhood of Tommy at first. Of course, I was going to say he's no threat to steal, but for heaven's sakes, he got a triple last night. <laughs> and Galarraga, after miss, uh, missing his location a lot early in the ball game. He's pretty much putting it right on Avila's glove here in the middle inning. Yeah, good running fastball on that last pitch. The first pitch that slider down and away. The same pitch that Delman Young struck out on in the second inning. See if he goes back to the slider. Going back inside again. And a little pop up to short center. Jackson sprinting in. And out number two. Before Nick Punto comes to the plate, AT&T trivia were the last rookie teammates to make the All-Star team. I wonder if you. I, I know this because that was on our StatSync uh, report that we get before each series. Okay. So are you withdrawing from the competition or? Can I just can I just mention Jim Rice and Fred Lynn? No, that's not it. That's not it. Okay, that would have been my guess. Punto flips it foul. I'll give you a hint. It's a Chicago team. And not the White Sox. I would narrow it down then to the Cubs. Very good. <laughs> See? All right, now that makes we it got a, that a right. correct answer right there. <laughs> One strike to Punto. Two strikes. Well, Galarraga's got that slider that just he'll throw in on lefties like that pitch right there. You think you're on it, and all of a sudden it's right in your hands. That's a slider that he had a couple years ago that he, he had a very good rookie season 13 and 7 in 28 starts with an ERA of 3.75. But last year, a frustrating year. Two strikes to Punto. Nice block by Avila. Well, if the Twins have been concerned about Nick Blackburn losing his sinker, the word last year for Galarraga, he lost the slider. He didn't have the bite on it. It didn't uh, prove to be an effective pitch for him, which is why his numbers were inflated. So when you're a sinker slider pitcher, as both these guys are, you lose either one of those pitches, you're in trouble. One and two to Punto. What they both have is good control. 
You know, they're they're guys that if you look at the numbers coming in, not a lot of walks. They don't strike out a lot of guys, but they make the ball. You know, put the opponent put the ball in play. Blackburn's just run through that stretch where he's left a lot of pitches up, and the opponents will put it into play, but has scored a lot of runs. Not the few of them out of play. Mm -hmm. That happens, believe me. One and two. To Punto. Another foul. A good changeup right there, and Punto fouling it off to keep this bat going. And Delaraga wants to talk to Avila. Well, you mentioned that Nick's first at bat. He, he's really, I think, over the last couple, two, three weeks, has done a good job of that. Just fouling pitches off and hopefully getting a pitch to his liking and getting some hits. The average up to 253 for Punto. One and two. And another nice block by Avila. And a good take right there by Nick. You look at this revised lineup, and who knows how frequently we'll see Kubel and Tony and Young and Kadair all in the lineup. But the, the Punto's hitting ninth, regardless of who's hitting in front of them most times. You get a ninth place hitter who can grind out at bats and hit 250. And you know, continue to work the pitcher almost like a second leadoff man. The Twins would take that, I think, from Nick Punto. Yeah, the Twins have made Galarraga throw a lot of pitches by fouling off some pitches. 78 pitches so far in a ball game. Here with two outs in the fourth inning. Most pitches he's thrown in an outing, 106. Tommy will leave early here with two outs and a full count. Punto wastes another one. Tommy will get his exercise here if Punto keeps fouling pitches off. Fox tracks brought to you by the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. Yeah, and you know, you foul off good pitches, good fastball down in the zone, and Nick fouling it off. Just off the inside corner, and Tony goes to second with Punto really uh, working hard to get a free pass here in the fourth. That was a great at bat right there by Nick Punto. You see Avilas wanting that ball away, and it flips the inner half of the plate, but because where Avilas was sitting, he had to reach for that ball, and home plate umpire Scott Berry saying that ball was inside. Going to the mound, so Blackburn's issued a couple of walks. Colorado hadn't until the fourth inning here. He walked Tommy and Punto, and that gets Span, who stung him twice for a couple of solid hits, to the plate with two men on. And tripled to center field in the first inning and scored. And then single leading off the third and came in on Morno's two out single. So another situation where the Twins can score a run here with a two out hit. Covers the outside corner, a changeup for strike one. One strike to Denard's man. That's to right field. And Ordonez can't make the play. Another two out hit. It's two for Span. He wants one more. A pair of triples, and the Twins take a two run lead. So the watch. Both of them come back to Hot Galarraga. 
Well, take a look at this fastball. Well, oh, the slider right there, and Span jumping all over it, over the head of Ordonez. And Tommy scores. But then Span saying, you know what? I want my second triple of the ball game, and he gets it on his third hit. Span driving in RBI number 30 and 31. Four of the five runs for the Twins. Scoring on two out hits. Here's Hudson. And Avila just a backhand that pitch. Setting up outside and Alaraga missed inside. Span, as we've told you, throughout uh, the uh, season series so far, he's just been a tiger tormentor. He's hit his best against Detroit. Was held to just one hit last night, but he's got three quick ones here tonight. Grant Thomas warming up again for Detroit. And as we move along here, we're a long ways from the end of the ball game. But Jim Leland said after the game last night that Jose Valverde will not be used tonight. He's not available. You know, Valverde asked to get five outs in the ball game last night. And of course, Zumaya is gone. Bouncer right side. Nice stop by Cabrera. And he underhands it to Galarraga, who got a foot on the bag. Well, it wasn't pretty, but at least in this instance, the Tigers got the out call. And Cabrera to Galarraga for the final out of the fourth. The Twins lead by two. and Galarraga covering. Yeah, Galarraga getting over there and you know this has been shown so many times. He says give me the ball, give me the ball and he does. He gets it, steps on the bag. But Jim Joyce saying that the runner beat him. McDonald definitely was out. And we just saw a play right there that uh, Bill Welke said no, he got his foot on the bag to retire the Twins in the fourth. Half swing by Austin Jackson. One strike with Blackburn back on the mound with a two run lead for the second time. Jackson hitting a double that was central to the Tiger three run third. Two strikes. Not much power. But he's done a great job getting on base, playing a flawless center field. Bouncer to third, Pedire. Well, that ball bounced off of Jackson's foot. Still two strikes. 
He has struck out a lot so far. Jackson has 76 times in 273 plate appearances. Take a look where this ball hits him. Right off that left foot. Huh. Two strikes. And strike three. That's 77. Why, that's why I brought it up. <laughs> Blackburn picks up his fourth strikeout. TNT trivia question. You know the answer to this, do you? Well, Soto was the catcher for the Cubs. Giovanni Soto. And uh, Fukudome. Fukudome. Yeah. Well, ding, 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 ding. Very nice. Damon with a swing and a miss. On an off speed pitch. Twins trying to set a little history with uh, the push for Justin Morneau to be voted out of the All Star game in the starting lineup along with Joe Maurer. Little pop up. Ouch. Who's going to catch it? It's Morno in front of Hudson out number two. Isn't that a great sound right oh, there? It's, just, it's nauseating is what it is. It's I like writing down in my book, Jam. Yeah. Two down. Well, Morno with a chance to be the other starter for the Twins in the All-Star game. And we've wondered from time to time, when's the last time any small or mid-market team has had two starters in the All-Star game for the Twins? You got to go back to 1967 when it was what Rod Carew and Harmon Killebrew, I believe, were the two starters for the American League in the All Star game. And the Twins, since then, as many great players as they've had, they've not had two starters in the starting lineup since 1967. Well, that'd be pretty cool if Justin Morneau is uh, in with Joe Maurer. Voted in. You know, we were confident Justin will get there. It's just to be acknowledged by uh, the fans as the number one choice in your position would be pretty special. Line foul, two strikes. Two strikes. To Ordonez, who's hit two ground balls here tonight. Ordonez scratched from the lineup before game time last night, and it wasn't because of a rib cage injury. He came down with a, a bug of some sort. Roller to short, and Blackburn in the fourth has his best inning. A one, two, three, fifth inning. Engineers, they're all getting together to enjoy some outdoor baseball. And if you're wondering, what do transportation engineers do? You know all those signs, Dick and Bert, that you ignore as you make your way here into the ballpark, all the traffic signs? They're the guys that make them, and they're not happy with any of you. You got that? <laughs> you like that stop sign? 
Yeah, the stop sign and the uh, the lit signs around the ballpark telling you where to go. These are the people that design them here in the heart of Twins territory. Now, when they say 55, they probably mean 55 miles per hour, yeah. right? One strike to Maurer, a couple of outfield flies. He'll lead off the fifth here against Armando Galarraga. One and one. Earlier we talked about Maurer and his uh, frustration in hitting line drives and not getting much to show for it. Here again, according to Stats LLC, the highest percentage line drive hitters in baseball. And uh, Austin Jackson of the Tigers at the very top of the list. Two and one to Maurer. And Avila lost some protection. Like a shoulder pad, huh? Well, they belong to the umpire. <laughs> Two and one to Bauer. He's going to get a base hit here. This three one pitch. Galarraga's thrown a lot of pitches. This will be his 90th pitch of the ball game. Now he's making his eighth career start against the Twins. Now the Twins have had good luck against them. One win, five losses in those first seven starts. There's his hit, leading off the fifth. Well, we've talked about Justin Morneau and his candidacy leading narrowly the vote getting uh, by uh, the American League at first base and his teammate Jim Tomey. Uh, offers his endorsement. I've had the fortune of playing in five All-Star games in my career, and I know that Justin Morneau is a true All-Star. Send Justin to Anaheim as the starting first baseman by voting at TwinsBaseball.com. You can vote up to 25 times, and voting ends Thursday night. Kubel, a couple of lefties. It'll be Futaini. And he has struggled so far this year in his second season with the Tigers. 22 and a third innings. He's walked 15. Now three intentional with 20 strikeouts. He'll give you different arm angles. 
And a slow breaking ball over for a strike. A big sweeping breaking ball, a fastball, not an overpowering fastball, and a changeup. He, 27 years old from Taiwan. And Moral gets another one and swings through it. Two strikes. That's how you go to an all star game. You hit righties and lefties about equally as well. Quickly put away by me. One away. Yeah, three straight breaking balls. That last one out of the strike zone. Take a look at this pitch right here. That ball's way outside. And Justin goes down on three pitches. Here's Kubel. We'll see what he gives him. Pitch off the plate, ball one. The Royals have come back with three runs against Gavin Floyd. It's 4 3 Chicago, top of the sixth in Kansas City. And not as lofty as Morno's numbers, but Kubel's numbers improving against both righties and lefties. Now a different situation for me instead of a, being ahead of a dangerous left handed hitter, he's behind him 2 0. Just foul. And Kubel who cracked an RBI double in the first nearly got another extra base hit down the right field line. I see Cabrera jumping off the bag, but the ball just foul. Bill Welke right there calling it foul, the first base umpire. Two and two to Jason Kubel. Dave, one of three left handers in the Tiger pen. Brad Thomas, who was warming up before. Phil Polk has to face lefties like Morno and Kubel later in the game. Gets away from Avila and Maurer scampers in second. Well, I don't know if Avila got crossed up or not right there, but the ball looked like it hit his glove and just deflected away. Another breaking ball. It'll be a pass ball on Avila, allowing Joe Maurer to go from first to second. It's almost called a strike. So three and two now with Maurer at second, one away. First base open and Kadair on deck. Very close pitch breaking in front of the plate. And Kubel fills first base with a walk. You can ask a question online at carsoup.com forward slash baseball. Ben Gildner from Austin, Minnesota. Most managers are exposition players, but not ex pitchers. Why is that? Good question. I don't know. I mean, there have been some managers that have been ex pitchers, but uh, most of them, a lot of the managers were former catchers. Right. It's been a long held uh, uh, mystery in baseball why former pitchers haven't become 
more better managers. Here's Kadir. Twins had one. Ray Miller. Yeah, I just think you know pitchers. I mean, you, you, you're pitching. You know, I mean, if you're a middle infielder, you're always you're always watching the ball game. All right. Good question. I don't I don't know why. Larry Rothschild was uh, maybe the most recent manager who was a former pitcher. Mm -hmm. One strike to Kadir. And now two strikes. So he throwing a lot of spinning stuff up there. Gets a fastball by Kadir. Trying to think if there are any current former pitchers as a managers in the big leagues right now. Two strikes. Kadir hits it hard but foul. Well, Roger Craig, you know, he managed. For a while, yeah. 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 And a pitcher. I'm trying to think of some of my managers throughout my career were pitchers. Well, you mentioned Ray Miller, but yeah. I, you know, I think in Twins history he's the only former pitcher to have managed. Kadir's been uh, stuck in a frustrating rut here, hitting the ball hard and doesn't have much of anything to show for it. And now a liner foul. Well, you'd like to think that this would be a matchup that would favor Kadir, even though he's up there with two strikes. He actually gives up more hits to left handed batters, a higher percentage of hits to left handers than right handers. Another two strike pitch to the Twins third baseman. That's to left down the line. And a fair ball toward the corner. Mauer's going to score. Kubel being waved around. He's coming home, and Kadir drives in a pair with a double. Well, you mentioned he's been swinging a hot bat. This has not had much to show for it. And it looked like he got a pitch up right there and hit it sharply down that left field line. Kubo hustling from first base, a breaking ball, pushed into that corner. Brendan Bosch having a little trouble in that corner, and that allows Kubo, excuse me, Kubo to score all the way from first. So Kadir picking up. A couple RBIs, number 34 and 35 on the year, on his 15th double. And the Twins take a 7 to 3 lead. Tommy, the hitter, walked and scored his last time up. Well, current day, Bud Black. There you go. Yes. Padres. Yes. He's a good pitcher, too. Yes. And whoever's well, going to get the floor Tom, to Tommy Lasorda. Right. Was a former pitcher. At least he says he was. <laughs> and a strike inside, one and one. Twins with uh, five extra base hits last night. They were out extra base hit last night, four to three. Yeah, Tigers have walked three batters so far in a ball game, and they've all scored. Two last inning. Kubel here this inning. Tickles the outside corner and Tommy doesn't agree. One and two. Close to the pitch. Uh, and ended up walking Kubel. Going to the mound. He said, he said, I know I don't want to throw that one. <laughs> I've done that before. You step up. No, 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 no. He'll hit that one a long way. One and two. To Tony. 
Simmons with a two spot in the fourth and two more so far here in the fifth. Two and two. Jerry White. It's play by the ball boy, the ball man on the right field line. He's had a tough time here. He entered the ball game. Galarraga started the inning after Maurer's single. He was relieved. A long battle here between me and Tony. Tommy waves at strike three, two down. Oh, and he picks up his second strikeout. Got Morneau in the first inning to swing on a pitch just like that. And he goes back to that breaking ball and pick, gets Jim Tommy to swing at a pitch on the outer half of the plate. The ball even further away than Justin's strike three. Young is going to be intentionally walked to get Punto to the plate with two men aboard. Well, the first three walkers have scored. Now an intentional pass will put Young at first base. Saturday, it's Armed Services Appreciation Day. U.S. Bank is the presenting partner of this annual event. Game against the Rays begins at 3:10, and if you've got tickets, get to the park early for a special pregame ceremony honoring the brave men and women of our military. For more information on Armed Services Appreciation Day and U.S. Bank's involvement, please call 833 Twins. Here's Punto with two on and two out. A little surprised to see you still sitting here. I thought you'd ask for a couple innings off to go over and check out the Justin Bieber concert over at Target Center. I had to ask somebody who he was. <laughs> You're more interested in watching Justin Morneau? Yeah, I'd okay. rather watch this ball game right here. I'm going to see Punto get a hit. 2 0. Oh. Nick hitting 286 as a right-handed hitter. Three and oh. Punto's walk really was a a key mistake for Galarraga in the fourth inning. There were two outs. Punto is the number nine hitter, but the walk brought Span to the plate. And he hit his second triple of the game to drive in the go ahead runs. Yeah, Punto, I'm sure, will be taking right here. Make him throw a strike. And he misses low. So now Span, who already has two triples, two runs scored, and two runs batted in, and three hits. Span started this ball game off in the bottom of the first inning with a triple, then scored on Hudson's RBI double. In the third inning, a base hit. He later scored. And then in the fourth inning, a two-run triple, his second triple of the ball game, his sixth of the season. And so now Span bases full, two down. And that hits that outside corner. It was a again a pitch very close to that that ended up walking Kubel. Well, I tell you what, nobody has enjoyed Target Field more than Denard Span hitting 370 here, and he hit 260 on the road his last road trip. So those numbers going up a little bit. But he has enjoyed Target Field. 
foul back to strike. You know, and he's a hitter here that, I mean, it's kind of makes the point of, you know, the twin second as far as target field getting more doubles. You know, 156 doubles and spans that type of hitter. He's not going to hit a lot of home runs. He's more of a gap type hitter. And Blackburn says that poured on, fellas. Let's get one more big hit here and keep padding the lead. Two strikes to span. One and two. Well, that fastball inside just sets up that breaking ball. He is able to strike out more no and also Tommy going hard inside. Now you can go back in again or you can go to that breaking ball. We'll see what knee does right here. Avila behind the plate. Always watch him move as the pitch is delivered home. One and two. A high drive to right field. Off the wall. And Span will round second and go for his third triple. Triples in the first five innings for Denard Span. Boy, he got a breaking ball up, and it looked like it was going to be the second grand slam for the Twins this year. I think Span thought he got it all. But right there, hit high off that wall. And Ardonias, the ball gets behind him again, and Span with a three run triple. At least he didn't do the Statue of Liberty thing he did uh, about a month ago when he thought he hit a grand slam. Three in the game. And now Hudson. Ninth man to bat. Ball one. What a night for Denard Spam. Three triples. Five runs batted in. Four hits so far. Two runs scored. And now two and oh. I was told that Kenny Landro ties a record, twins record for most triples in a ball game. Kenny Landro had three. That happened in July 3rd, 1980 against the Texas Rangers. Well, Span has said he wants to lead the league in triples. And he started the day two behind Carl Crawford. And now he is leading the league in three baggers. Unless Crawford has uh, hit at least one at Fenway Park tonight. Two and one. And now three and one. Colorado charged with one run here in the fifth inning. Knee has been left on the hook for at least four. And at some point, Jim Leland's going to have to go out and get me out, and that moment has arrived. So, he who has struggled this year ends up walking three, give, uh, walking four, I should say, and giving up a bases clearing triple. And Gonzalez will pitch next for the Tigers.
Natalie Kane, Ron Coomer will be there. And uh, this time the Twins and Tigers will be playing in Detroit. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com. Enrique Gonzalez coming out of that bullpen, 27 years old in his first season with the Tigers. Getting called up from Toledo, making just his sixth appearance for the Tigers. He's pitched for the Diamondbacks, the Padres, and the Red Sox. Not a lot of major league experience, a lot of up and down. Did make some starts for the Arizona Diamondbacks. But now in the bullpen for the Tigers. Bauer started this inning with a single to right. The Twins have, as I said, taken four walks. They've gotten a double to drive in a couple, a triple to drive in three. And lead it 10 to 3. Ball one. Well, Gonzalez getting called up when Ryan Perry was put on a disabled list back on June 10th. Another blow to the uh, Tiger bullpen. They hope to get Perry back sometime soon, but it was a nice compliment even last year mm -hmm. to uh, Zamaya and Bobby C. And Brandon Lyon and setting up to Fernando Rodney last year. 2 0 to Maurer. Span at third. He's spent half the night at third base. At the knees, 2 and 1. And he'll say better there than center field. <laughs> I don't know that, uh, well, obviously I didn't see a Twins player do it. I, do it. I don't think a, I've seen an opponent do it three triples in one game. Go a month without seeing them, a triple, and here, man, it's like he took Jim Tomey's triple last night as an insult. It was a little chopper, and Rodriguez throws to first. Mowers retired. Ten men bad. Five of them score. Three of them on Denard Span's third triple of the night. Giant heating and cooling systems. Tigers are in town again, taking on the Twins. Tomorrow coverage begins at 11.30 a.m. Another beautiful day, sunny and pleasant with a first pitch temperature of 72 degrees. Just a beautiful night for baseball and a good looking score, too. 10-3, the Twins hoping to jump back into first place over the Tigers. And Nick Blackburn facing Miguel Cabrera, delivering ball one. And now a strike. Blackburn has done just fine except for the third inning. 
And the Tigers got three straight hits, four total hits, and three runs in the third. They had a brief three to two lead. Cabrera with a sharp single to left to start the six. Let's go to Robbie Ansmikowski. He's got guys, a special guest. Yeah, guys, I'm hanging out here with uh, the Wolves, Timberwolves president of basketball operations, David Conn. He's got his son Kellen here hanging out. First time you're seeing Target Field, David. What are your impressions of this place? Well, it's truly beautiful. I had heard a lot of good things from the community before I walked in, but it's very elegant and it's it's almost understated elegance. And I think that you know it's a reminder that you know, I know how hard the Twins had to work for this and for them to persevere. Low those many years, they really should be, you know, re they're rewarded for all their hard work. Big free agent season. Is this something maybe you could use as recruiting chip for potential free agents about the city of Minneapolis? Well, without tipping any hands, I suspect we'll be back here a couple times later this week with a couple of people who are visiting us. And I'm very thankful that the Twins have such a beautiful venue. And I'm thankful that they timed their home schedule with the first week of free agency. David, congratulations on the draft and uh, best of luck and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Dick and Burt, Wesley Johnson, their first round pick out of Syracuse University. Going to be a great player for the Timberwolves once he hits the floor. Thank you, Robbie. Yeah, go Wolves. Here's Bosch. Off the glove of Blackburn. And it'll be an infield hit. So the Tigers get a couple of hits here to start the sixth inning. Well, as a pitcher, you know, you go after that ball, and right off the tip of the glove, Bosch will get an infield base hit. You see Orlando Hudson right at the top of your screen. He's coming in to field it, and then the ball deflecting away, and that allows Bosch on an awkward swing right there, right off the tip of the glove. You know, one of the reasons that Blackburn has fared well is what we just saw. Remember when the twins, uh, there's Blackburn who gets a piece of that one and sets himself and fires the Morno and they get Gian one away. So Blackburn getting peppered here in the sixth inning, runners at second and third and one out. Yeah, that ball right there, he's having a tough time getting that ball in his glove. That's a double play ball right there. And Blackburn knocked it down, ended up getting the out at first, but both runners advance. And right back to him right here and the ball deflected getting behind him Blackburn getting the out at first. It'll bring up Inge with one down the Twins of course playing the infield back. I was going to say remember when uh, the Twins were in Milwaukee in fact Blackburn made one of the starts. And there were so many balls hit in front of home plate some even took that first hop in front of home plate and bounced to the outfield. Look what happens to the ball here. Splat. You can see the dirt spray at, upon impact. It's a much softer field here, which would, you know, help a pitcher mm -hmm. like Blackburn, who uh, is a sinker ball pitcher. Well, you've seen a lot of fields, you know, that when a sinker baller's out there pitching, they will make that a little bit softer. That's home field advantage. 2 0 oh now to end with Blackburn. Hoping to get through the six there, but it's off to a wobbly start for him. Scored a foul, two and one. And bounced into a double play in the second, walked in the four. Ryan Dunsing starting to loosen up. Blackburn just needs an out right here. And he gets a called second strike, two and two. Pitch count still very reasonable, 83 pitches. And now starting with Inch, Blackburn facing the bottom third of the Detroit lineup. Three and two. Sort of the right side, that should be an out. A run scores, and it's 10 to 4, two away. 
Well, Inch gets the RBI, but the most important thing, an out right there. And now Avila will hit. Got to remember too, and so far in this month, we've talked about the short starts for Blackburn. This is the most pitches he's thrown, really, since three starts ago against the Braves, where he went seven innings. His last couple starts, 50 pitches, 77 pitches. Right now, this will be his 85th pitch of the game. The center hit well, span back there to end the inning. The Tigers get one and leave one. Blackburn's completed six innings here tonight. For the Coors Light freeze camp, and this was the first triple for Denard's fan just over the outstretched Magler Ordonez in right field. Ordonez just a glove short of catching that ball, and Span it was a leadoff triple, and he scored. That was a cross food Coors Light freeze camp. Now the Twins will hit now, bottom of the six. Denard Span will hit seventh this inning. I can't believe any player in Major League history has ever gotten four triples in one game. I'll have to look that up. He, uh, in all likelihood, is going to have at least one more opportunity, certainly. Maybe two. See the defensive changes for the Tigers. There's a foul back uh, off the bat of Borno. Borno, Kubel, and Kadair to face Gonzalez here in the sixth inning. Borno, an RBI single. Surprised anybody in Clint's history to hit three triples in a game. Walked by Ken Herbeck, he said in his career he had 17 triples. Or <laughs> well, you left, he's right behind you. Watch what you say. He's standing right behind you. 17 triples. Well, the outfielders break their legs or something. Tim Lauder was with him. He said the outfielders collided. I thought he was saying between the two of them they combined for 17 <laughs> triples. Timmy, did you get a triple? <laughs> two and two to Morno. And a strikeout. One away. Well, Gonzalez coming out of that bullpen, picking up his first strikeout. Justin striking out for the third time. That'll bring up Kubel. As it turned out, Kubel drew an awfully big walk in the fifth inning. He was behind in the count early. 
Ended up uh, taking a close pitch from Fu Taney for a walk. Kadir followed with a two run double. Later in the inning, Span drove in three with another triple. Bouncer to second. I believe that is worth. Two down. Play. You can get a behind the scenes view of this beautiful ballpark, Target Field. Public and private tours are now available. You can find out ballpark tour dates in times or to reserve a private tour for a larger group. Visit twinsbaseball.com or call 833 Twins. Danny Worth in at second base. Yeah, Don Kelly at first and uh, Ryan Rayburn in left field. So and Bosch moves over to right. Yeah. Here's Kadire. Had to be relief, uh, a relief for Kadire to get that two run double given as hard as he's hit the ball in this series and didn't have much to show for it. 2 0. Two and one. Final game of the series tomorrow, and we will uh, remind those of you who uh, might not be aware, but we are televising tomorrow. We're going to be on TV for the final game of the series. It is not on any of the published television schedules, the pocket schedules, the refrigerator magnet schedules, or anything like that. But we'll be where we are right now, hoping that you'll be where you are. Santiago with a great throw across to get to the from nice deep in the right hole. There. Yeah, very nice play by Santiago. Three up, three down at the bottom of the six. Good night for the Twins. They lead at 10 4. Nick Blackburn out there pitching in the seventh inning facing Ramon Santiago. Oh, this is a type of ball game that Nick Blackburn needed right here. Yes, he gave up three runs in the third inning. Yes, it's not a quality start, but this is working out of a situation where you struggled. So you need to go deep into the ball game. And Blackburn, a type of guy that, you know, I mean, just get up to 100 pitches. Let's see if that sinker continues to sink. Mountain Dew game summary with the Twins getting a couple of first inning runs. Orlando Hudson after the triple by Span, he gets an RBI double. And then Kubel with two outs, an RBI double. Twins score a couple runs in that first inning. And the fifth inning, there was a three run triple. His third triple of the game for Denard Span. 
strike one to Austin Jackson. Fouled away, two strikes. You know, when you're a pitcher and you've been struggling, and all of a sudden, you know, you're down three to two, you keep battling. Twins tied it in the bottom of the third. He went out for the fourth, put a zero on, and then the Twins scored two and five in the fourth and fifth to take that ten to three lead. Now, you know, you can you can relax a little bit. You now Blackburn has an opportunity to kind of stretch it out. Time for the Quest High Speed Pitch, brought to you by Quest High Speed Internet. Mondo Gal Galarraga clocked as high as 92. Blackburn at 93. In sending Blackburn out for the seventh inning, they also probably answered another question: Did he preserve his spot in the starting rotation? I mean, why send him out in the seventh if you, if you don't think he pitched very well? But uh, the fact that his next start would come in the next series against Tampa Bay here. Uh, the pop up right side Hudson calling Morno off foul ground catch and out number two. I mean all that suggests that Blackburn at least pitched well enough here tonight to stay in the rotation. Well, again he needs this over a win or a loss he just needs to go out and throw. And it's been a while you know what three starts ago he went seven very good innings here against the Braves but the last you know, four of the last five starts. He just not has has not gone very deep into the ball game. Johnny Damon with a pair of hits, a pair of runs batted in. He takes low ball one. Basically, the offense allowed Blackburn to kind of work it out a little bit. Is there any value in Blackburn being left out there to face the likes of Jackson and Damon a, a fourth time? To maybe bookmark this for a future start against Detroit. This is just to build up arm strength right here and find that sinker. And you know when when you get a little tired, that's where Blackburn becomes his best because that ball moves more. Sometimes today, when you don't get a chance to go deep into a ball game, you're almost too strong. That hits the corner to. Make the count three and one. Even on that pitch right there, you saw some good movement. Do it again. Make him hit his way on. Out to right side, Hudson from the outfield grass. Pulls him out. And Blackburn in the seven has a one, two, three in. by Quest High Speed Internet. Get blazing fast speeds that won't burn up your wallet. 
Jim Tomey in the box ready to hit for the Twins leading off the seventh and he takes outside ball one. I can see the struggles for Nick Blackburn over the last you know two starts but here tonight 97 pitches and he got 12 ground ball outs along with five fly ball outs and four strikeouts and he did not need a mustache. No he did not. One and one to Tony. Hit high and deep to left center field. And gone. His second opposite field home run in as many nights. The Twins have played 36 games here without a left handed hitter hitting an opposite field home run. And now Tommy's got him in back to back game. And home run number 572. Now one behind a guy that he admires very much, Harmon Killigrew. Taking that pitch the other way. And still with a lot of power, Jim Tommy. Home run number eight on the year. Delman Young, the hitter. And down and away, ball one. Tigers are going to start a. Left handed starting pitcher tomorrow, Andy Oliver. So we'll see if Tony's in the lineup, but Tony's second on the active list for home runs hit. And very close now to tying and then passing Harmon Killebrew. Two and oh. Young lifts it. Into foul territory, into the seats. Well, because of interleague and the Twins playing nine games away from home, Jim Tomey didn't get a lot of at bats. So over the last couple nights, he's taken advantage of those at bats. Over the mound, Santiago, close play, is able to get Young for the first out. Ron Gardenhire was asked before the game today, you know, how long can you play Tomey consecutively? So well, we're going to have to wait and see. We don't know, but he did say what you said. With all the time spent at National League ballparks, Tony pretty well rested. They've got to be careful with the back and the plantar fasciitis and all that. But this lineup sure looks like it should produce a lot of runs with him hitting seventh and Young hitting eighth, and Punto hitting ninth. One strike. Punto's walked a couple of times and scored. Punto 0 for 1 with the two walks. Batting average, of course, important to a hitter, but for a number nine hitter, on base percentage is pretty important too. Punto's drawn 22 walks and an on base percentage of around 340. Again, for a number nine hitter, that's uh, that's uh, quite adequate. One and two. Two strikes more and more of this. Fouling pitches off. Yeah, that home run by Jim Tomey, that was his 63rd home run against the Detroit Tigers. That's the most against any organization. He's hit actually more home runs against Detroit now than he did against the Twins. Yeah. So you're the Tigers, and you've seen Tomey bludgeon you first with the Indians. Then the White Sox. And now the Twins. And you're probably thinking, you know, maybe we ought to sign this guy <laughs> just to keep him from hitting home runs against us. Everybody else in the division except Kansas City has had it. Two and two to Punto. Base hit. And Punta will have reached three times here in the ballgame. And that'll get Span up in the seventh with a chance, we think, to make some history if he can 
hit a fourth triple. He's getting a, a nice standing ovation before he even steps in the box. A yeah, nice uh, at bat right there for Nick Punto, and we'll see if Stan can pick up another triple and maybe another RBI. Last year, a career high six RBIs in a ball game against the Kansas City Royals. Five so far here tonight on three triples and a base hit, a single. Run. <laughs> Just keep running. His last five hit game came against the Tigers, I think, from memory now. His first five hit game came against Detroit. Some people think it's the most exciting play in baseball. I think you've said for you it is the triple. Well, he's brought a lot of excitement to the ballpark yes, here tonight. Yes, yes. How important was it for the Twins to, after a disappointing game last night, get out to a quick start and span started the game with a triple to center field. Two and one. Get a fastball right here. Fans are booing that's, already. Well, you know what? That's what's so cool <laughs> about coming to a ball game. You never know what you're going to see. You might see right now. Oh, well, the last uh, trip player to have three triples in a ball game back in 2002. And Span reaches all five times. It tells you a little bit about Span, I think, too. He was quite content to take a walk rather than swinging a pitch down and away out of the strike zone. So first and second one away. Well, at times it's an individual game because of what Span does, and then other times, like taking that pitch, it's a team game. You get on, give Hudson a chance maybe to pick up an RBI. Keep the inning going. It was Hudson's double that drove in Span for the game's first run. And Rodriguez misses again. Ball one. Or Gonzalez, I should say. About 210. Ground ball to second. And Worth starts a double play to end the inning. One run for the Twins in the seventh on Jim Tomey's eighth home run of the year. And it's 11 to 4.
Do you ever get tired of seeing that last out? Not at all. Were you There's a leader right there, Mr. Kelly. Were you surprised he stayed in the dugout? You'd gotten to know him pretty well. I mean, there, there, a lot was made of the fact that here, Minnesota finally a world champion. Everybody running on the field, and the manager stayed in the dugout. Well, if you know Tom Kelly, he didn't want, you know, I mean, his job was to be a manager, and he let the players celebrate. A uh, class man. Great man to pitch for, great man to, to be around. And one of Minnesota's top 50 uniform personnel. Brian Dunsing comes out of the Twins' pen here in the eighth. Yeah, Dunsing doing a great job out of that bullpen. 1.95 earned run average, making his 31st relief appearance. So good job by Nick Blackburn. Not a quality start, but a start that he was able to stretch it out. Two walks, four strikeouts, and seven very good innings. Matt Tolbert taking over for Michael Kadire at third base. Two and two. At the top of the ninth in Kansas City. White Sox clinging to a 4 3 lead over the Royals. In the middle. Punto, nice pickup. Comes up, firing, and got him! What a play by Nick Punto! Well, you never quit playing the game. That ball looked like it was up the middle for a base hit. And Nick Punto on our home depot. Doing more great defensive play skids and then able to put something on the throw. We get the runner at first. What a great defensive play. Rayburn retired on a marvelous play by Nick Bunto. And now here's strike one to Kelly. Fastball inside. Mentioning White Sox leading the Royals 4 3 in the ninth inning, trying to get through uh, tonight's game and maybe another game or two without Bobby Jenks, who's on the family emergency list. J.J. puts into the game in the eighth inning. He may be asked to close it out for the White Sox. Kelly strikes out, out number two. A good breaking ball right there, and Dunson picks up a strikeout. One of the top of 50 uniform personnel for the Twins, Tom Kelly took over in 1986 and managed the team through 2001. The highlights, of course, 87 and 91. So much talk about the All Star game. One of the great thrills for Tom, I know, was managing the two All Star teams in 1988 and 1992. The uh, World Series managers from the year before get the honor of managing the All Star team the next year. Kind of an odd situation when they had the All Star game here in 1965. The World Series teams the year before were the Cardinals and the Yankees. Just off the plate, one and two. Well, after the uh, Cardinals won the World Series in 64, they fired their manager, Johnny Keane, who then went over to manage the Yankees, the team he beat in the World Series. And that left the opening in the National League side for the 65 game played here at Metropolitan Stadium for Gene Mock who managed the Phillies whose team lost the big lead late in the 64 season. Casey Fien who was called up to replace Joel Zamaya in the Detroit bullpen warming up by pitch to the Twins in the eighth. Foul back. Dunson coming in, throwing strikes, 14 pitches, nine strikes. He retired the first two batters.
Two and two. And a big swing and a foul back to the net. That's a good looking hitter, Brendan Bosch. He hit a double on the first pitch he saw in the big leagues this year and hasn't stopped hitting. Hard and foul off the screen in front of the Twins dugout. For Brian Dunson and a great play by Nick Punto to start the inning. Post game wrap. Spanning the globe is our first topic, and he is the game story. Denard Span, four for four, five RBIs, three triples, two runs scored. An outstanding night for him. We'll talk to him post game. Plus, our instructional is playing catch with a purpose. Burton Tim will tell you how to make playing catch more fun. Plus, we'll bring a reaction from the clubhouse and manager Ron Gardenhire all on Quest Twins Live immediately following the Twins and the Tigers. Take it, Burton. Thank you, Robbie. Should be a lot of fun. I like to play catch with Tim Lauber. We'll reminisce a little bit about probably playing with our pops. Gonzalez out there trying to finish up the ball game. Gonzalez gives him up a couple hits in his, in relief, a home run to Jim Tomey, then a, a base hit to Nick Punto last inning. Pass to diving in. And Maurer hustling around first on his way to second in there with a double. Well, Maurer has been frustrated so often by infield shifts. Beats the shift with a line drive to the baseline side of Brandon In. Yeah, In's playing off the line, and Joe, like his typical swing, taking that ball the other way. In diving for the ball, he can't come up with it. And Ryan Rayburn has to go get this ball in. Makes a good throw to second, but it's a hustle double for Joe Maurer, his 22nd double of the year. And 
Morno takes outside ball one. Morno with a big two out hit in the third inning. It was just a single, but it drove in the tying run. The Tigers had just taken the lead with a three run top of the third. And given what's happened to the Twins over the last week or so, that might have been one of the most important runs uh, of the whole homestand to come back and tie it right away and not give the Tigers any uh, extended lead here. Repco in the on deck circle looks like he's going to hit for Kubel. Sky to left. And in fact, it's a short stop. Santiago makes the catch one away. But now Jason Repco. Kubel with a RBI double with two out in the first, then he walked and scored in the fifth. And now Repco going to uh, make a pinch hitting appearance. Hey, making his first appearance here at Target Field. Being called up from Rochester uh, about five days ago. One for four in his Twins debut in New York. But it'll die in left field. Mauer will be held. Repco's got a base hit. And the Twins are runners at first and third with one away. Well, he already likes. You can see Repco likes hitting a target field, too. <laughs> well, fastball right here. Going, that ball running in on Repco. Maybe broke his bat, but it's a base hit. Matt Tolbert hitting in Kadir's spot. Michael with a two run double and four trips. Tolbert entered the game defensively. So technically not a pinch hitting appearance. Lifted foul and out of play. Bring it up now because it may, may not impact Tolbert's. Uh, Position on the roster, but the Twins are kind of giving in to J.J. Hardy's request. It sounds like, assuming he got through today's uh, batting practice workout okay, the Twins are going to accelerate the timetable on Hardy and might have him back here available for them in the second half of the uh, toward the back end of the Tampa Bay series. Maybe Saturday and Sunday that JJ Hardy would be around. Here's a busted bat and a bouncer to short. They step on the bag and now Maurer hung out between third and home. You just don't want anybody to get hurt here. Maurer's tagged out and that'll end the eighth inning. So the Twins get a double from Maurer and a single from Repto. We go to the ninth. The Twins up comfortably.
Locked in five runs. Jim told me with the second solo home run in back-to-back -back nights. Also walk scored a couple runs. Nick Blackburn, most importantly, seven very good innings. Ryan Dunsing worked the eighth inning, a one, two, three, eighth inning with a couple strikeouts. Now Jose Maharas getting an opportunity to get an innings worth of work in here. Maharas rejoining the club in New York. Danny Worth will hit. First pitch foul back. Started at shortstop in last night's ball game. Got a couple hits and four at bats. That's why you bring your glove to the ballpark? Just about got the corner. One and two. Gardner higher impressed with how Maharis. Pitched in his return to the roster in New York. Another tune up inning for him. Yeah, one shot out inning. He did throw 21 pitches on Sunday. 12 for strikes and one shot out inning. Two and two. And John Beck. And then Avila will hit. Foul to the net. He's getting a couple of runs in the first, one in the third, couple in the fourth, but a big five run fifth, breaking the game open. Pop up short center field. Span comes in. One away. And a home run hit by Jim Tomey, our tours like hold hard blast. Yeah, back to back nights for Jim Tomey, almost the same spot, taking the ball the other way into the left field bleachers. Well, Tomey with his eighth home run and career home run, 572. And we'll hear from the big Jim, gentleman Jim, West Twins Live post game show. Brandon Inns will hit, and Art Span will join us. Inns, we're going to run with a ground ball in the sixth. And Maharis runs off the mound. I don't know if he stumbled after what happened last night. Maharis telling Hudson he's okay. I think he just lost his footing. Yeah, a lot of times when you're a reliever, you go out there, you know, there's been four or five guys already out there. They dig holes. And sometimes where you land, it might be on the side of where somebody else landed. That's what happened right there. So 2 0 oh to Brandon Inch. White Sox beat the Royals 4 to 3. Popped up. Span now running in with the Repco out there. And he makes the catch in right field. Two down. And that'll bring up Avila. So the Twins one out away from moving back into first place. After losing the opening game of this series and losing first place, you'd like to expect the team to respond well. And I think across the board, Burt with the Blackburn doing what he did, and obviously enough offense to push 11 runs across the board, the response was pretty positive. Yeah, very positive here tonight. 1 0 to Avila. Ground ball to Morno. 
Your Minnesota Twins are back in first place. Nick Blackburn getting a much needed win. Bernard Spann making a little bit of history with three triples. And the lineup that looks like it's going to produce some runs surely did tonight. Well, our Jimmy John's player of the game, Bernard Spann, with the three triples. He drove in five runs. He scored a couple runs. And then quite a night at the plate in that leadoff spot for the Twins. He was the igniter here tonight.